Good afternoon. My name is Marjorie Linton and I am an ordained minister of religion, author, motivational speaker, and a spiritual advisor with over 20 years experience. Welcome to my podcast, Healing Thoughts Today. Please join me now as I share workable views for healing and inspiration to empower you and to lift your vision higher. Giving is receiving is the healing thought for today and I am so very excited to share the Word of God with you. Please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 8. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for god loveth a cheerful giver and god is able to make all grace abound toward you that he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work amen God is the giver of all good things, my beloved friends, and his storehouse of good is never depleted. He gives freely to us all, so giving is our divine nature. Just as breathing is important to life, so is giving and receiving important to our existence. Both are opposite ends of the same stick. One cannot exist without the other. When one outweighs the other, there is imbalance in our lives that results in illnesses and limitation. A free flow of exchange is the essence of life and hoarding leads only to stagnation. Whenever we sow our seeds freely and bountifully, we demonstrate our faith in the omnipresent God, and the return is also free and bountiful. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Amen. If we do withhold our hand, my friends, there won't be a harvest. The story of Ruth and Naomi in the book of Ruth beautifully illustrates the wonderful benefits of giving and receiving. It demonstrates a biblical principle which is on point. It shows the nature of Christ, which is selfless living, thinking of others, freely giving and showing appreciation for every blessing. Because of a famine in Bethlehem, Naomi, her husband, and her two sons left Bethlehem in search of food. After arriving in Moab, her two sons met and married two Moabite women. But, soon after, my friends, disaster unfortunately struck. Naomi's husband died as well as her two sons. Quite broken and destitute, Naomi decided to return to Bethlehem to be reunited with her kin. One of her daughters-in-law, Ruth, made it quite clear to her not only would she be with her wherever she went, but she would also endure all things with her. So they arrived in Bethlehem and Ruth was instantly liked and accepted by Naomi's family. 
It wasn't long before Ruth sought employment to support herself as well as her mother-in-law. And with God's blessings, she found employment with Naomi's rich relative, Boaz, one of the richest men in Bethlehem. Boaz was impressed with Ruth and he asked her to marry him, after which Ruth conceived and had a son called Obed. Obed had a son called Jesse, and Jesse later became the father of King David. So, my beloved friends, Ruth became the great-grandmother of King David, from whose line Jesus the Christ came. Amen. Because of Ruth's unconditional love and giving, she was consequently blessed and she became a blessing to all mankind. Out of love, compassion, and kindness came Jesus the Christ. Beloved friends, the Christ consciousness begins with love and selflessness. Jesus was not only born out of a consciousness of love, selflessness, and humility. He lived in that awareness and he died on the cross so that we can have eternal life. Amen. The thing is, my beloved friends, he expects us to pay it forward. It pays to think of others besides yourself. It pays to give unconditionally of your monetary gifts. It pays to give freely of your services whenever there is a need. God loves a cheerful giver. And the truth is, whatever you give returns to you multiplied, pressed down, and running over. Giving pays dividends, my friends. This is a divine principle. In the book of Genesis, Abraham, God's faithful servant, thought of Lot rather than himself by offering Lot the more fertile land when they parted. And he was blessed with posterity beyond measure. God was pleased with Abraham when he told him in Genesis 13, 14 to 15, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Amen. One of my most profound blessings came to me quite unexpectedly after volunteering as Sunday School Superintendent at my home church in Kingston, Jamaica, being asked to sacrifice my Sunday morning worship experiences. At the church for teaching and directing Sunday School was a big stretch and I was a bit hesitant at the beginning. After a few days of contemplation and meditation, however, I willingly decided to let go of my reliance on and attachment to Sunday morning church experiences. I decided that the time had come for me to give back some of what I had learned. After my initial commitment, I dedicated myself fully to serving the children and I immersed myself passionately in my new role and spent most of my time at the Sunday school giving freely of my time, guiding, teaching, helping and supporting kids of all ages. I served with gladness of heart and gave willingly of my time, talent, and a treasure. I was filled to overflowing with an immense feeling of joy, my friends. Soon after, my love for the kids intensified 
and so did my blessings. Most of all, my divine purpose was revealed, which ultimately propelled me into the direction of ministry. Amen. It was quite interesting to notice that instead of falling behind spiritually as was my initial fear, I actually progressed enormously as I was forced to go deeper within to answer questions that came from inquiring minds. This was surely a wonderful and rewarding exchange of giving and receiving and I made quite an interesting observation that the children also had a lot to teach me. Amen. Not that I ever anticipated any particular return, but the big dividends came when I was accepted in the ministerial program at Unity Village in Missouri. Not only was I accepted, my friends, but I was also awarded a scholarship with an adequate monthly stipend as well as free accommodation. To top it all, I received an additional salary working part-time as a prayer associate at the prayer ministry for the duration of my ministerial training. Amen. We should never give to impress God, neither should we give for the purpose of receiving. Matthew 6 verse 3 says, But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Amen. We should never give grudgingly or sparingly, my friends. We should give freely and generously in faith, knowing that we can never outgive the universe. Amen. The purpose of giving is not to impress or placate God. Everything we have received comes from God. And when we give, we keep in the flow, ultimately giving back to ourselves. Amen. And now, beloved friends, let us look at some points for contemplation. God is the giver of all good things, and his storehouse of good is never depleted. God gives freely to us all, so giving is our divine nature. Just as breathing is important to life, so is giving and receiving important to our existence. Both giving and receiving are opposite ends of the same stick. When giving outweighs receiving, there is imbalance in our lives that results in illnesses and limitation. A free flow of exchange is the essence of life. Hoarding leads only to stagnation. Whenever we sow our seeds freely and bountifully, we demonstrate our faith in the omnipresent God. God loves a cheerful giver. Whatever you give returns to you multiplied, pressed down and running over. Out of love, compassion and kindness came Jesus the Christ. We should never give to impress God, neither should we give for the purpose of receiving. We should give freely and generously in faith, knowing that we can never outgive the universe. God loves a cheerful giver, and he always provides. The purpose of giving is not to impress or placate God. 
Everything we have received comes from God. When we give, we keep in the flow, ultimately giving back to ourselves. Amen. And now, beloved friends, I invite you now to join with me for the call to action. Turn in within now to that quiet place. Acknowledge the presence of God as a living, loving presence within you. You are a child of God, whole and complete. Now, please affirm, God within me is my instant, abundant and inexhaustible supply, my never-ending source of all good. Wherever I am, God is, and all that God hath is readily available to me. God has freely given me all that I need, and I am grateful. I accept my divine inheritance, and I keep myself in the flow of life, giving freely of my time, talent, and treasure and my blessings flow in every direction. With God as my source, I maintain balance in my life by devoting adequate time and attention to every aspect of my being. I keep a positive attitude, entertaining the highest and the best thoughts, and I expect only good. I give freely and I receive bountifully in return and my blessings flow profusely. I now give thanks for the bounty of God's inheritance. In this loving consciousness of the divine presence, I am strong, peaceful, confident, healthy, secure and wise. With joy in my heart, I give thanks for the fullness of life. My cup is full to overflow. Thank you, God. Amen. Beloved friends, it was my pleasure sharing healing thoughts today with you on the topic, Giving is Receiving. I do hope God's word will truly bless you and inspire you into taking rightful action. Please subscribe. God bless you.